In addition to visual aspects of map design, it is important to understand basic typographic guidelines when designing maps. The following is a list of guidelines for use on maps. Try to avoid decorative type families like Comic Sans as they appear strange. Also, use bold and italics sparingly on fonts. Try to avoid using more than two type families. For example, the first three words in this bullet point are a serif font called Times New Roman, which you can tell by the little serifs or small marks at the end of each letter. The last four words in this bullet point are a sans serif font called Calibri that does not have the serifs. As you can see, the mix of font types makes the overall text look strange. The type size you choose should be generally corresponded with the size important of map features. For example, a map that shows cities would use a larger font for the capital as opposed to a small town. When using GIS software tools, critically examine type specs. Don't just accept defaults that are given to you. Make sure that you are using the correct font based on what you're mapping. And as always, make sure to spell check. Some GIS tools do not have automatic spell checking when you add text. One thing that I do when making a map is to keep a word processing program open where I can paste my map text into the word processing program to check the text spelling, then paste the text back into my mapping program once the text has been checked for spelling. Next, I'll talk about correct label placement strategies. In this example, we will look at design ideas related to where the best positions are for text labels in relation to map symbols. For example, if you have a point symbol, the preferred place for a text label would be the upper right of the point symbol. The second best spot would then be the bottom right of the point symbol. The third best would be the top left, fourth on the bottom left, fifth on the top of the symbol, and the sixth would be on the bottom of the symbol. However, it is often the case that a different map symbol might block where the label goes. For example, in this image, we see that the point symbol is next to a line symbol. In this case, you could use the preferred label spot of the top right, but the label is visually separated from its symbol and can cause ambiguity as to what the label is actually referring to. In this case, the third preferred label position can be used to keep the label near the symbol. Additionally, in cases too where it is difficult to keep the label near its symbol, leader lines can be used to direct the label to its symbol. The label placement guidelines are applicable in these types of situations as well. For example, the upper right is preferred position with a leader line, as you see here, or whatever the best position available is. ArcGIS Pro provides you with many tools to support these exact label fitting strategies, and you will see this later on in the hands-on tutorial of this video series. This image shows several examples of incorrect label placement. For example, note how all of these labels are not in the correct positions and thus making it ambiguous as to what the labels are specifically referring to. In this case, the label is overprinting onto the label for the river as well as the river feature itself. Here, we see that the leader line is touching both the symbol and the label. Finally, we see another case of symbol overprinting, this time with a label overprinting across a road symbol. Using the label placement strategy guidelines previously discussed, we can address many of these issues. This image shows the previous map, but with the label issues corrected. For example, note how labels for the symbols in the upper right corner have been modified 
to use the best label placement strategies so as to remove ambiguity. Overprinting has also been corrected. Symbol leader lines have been resized so as to not touch the label or symbol. And finally, a symbol mask has been used to allow the label to overprint cleanly on the road. In this case, the label has a gray background to allow the label to blend with the background. Now that you've learned about the design of map symbols, I'll next discuss the design of the overall map itself in terms of common map elements. Maps contain standard elements used to create a final map product. These elements include a frame and neat lines, the mapped area, inset maps, titles and subtitles, a legend, data source attributes, scale bars, and orientation. Next, I'll walk you through what these elements look like by inspecting an actual map. In this image, you see a map of Poland. Many of the standard map elements previously discussed can be seen on this map. For example, here you see the frame and neat lines that define the edge of the map. The mapped area, which in this case, the map makers are using a figure ground relationship to contrast Poland shown in yellow with the surrounding countries shown in light brown. The inset that shows the broader context for where Poland is located in the world. The map title. And note how the map title for Poland and the surrounding country names like Germany are shown using a serif font while the names of cities in Poland are shown using a sans serif font. The map legend, which in this case shows many examples of ordinal data in terms of ranking of cities and boundary types. And finally, the scale bars, which in this example are shown both in kilometers and miles. Sizing and positioning is the idea that map elements, such as the mapped areas, title, and legend are at appropriate sizes and are positioned correctly on the final map. These ideas are best explained with examples. For example, this image shows appropriate sizing and positioning of map elements. Note how the mapped area fills the frame appropriately and that the title, mapped areas, and legend are centered with one another in terms of positioning. This image shows a map where the positioning of elements is appropriate, but the sizing of the mapped area is insufficiently small, as can be seen by the large amount of white space around the mapped area. This image shows an example where, again, the positioning of the elements is appropriate, as can be seen by the fact that the elements are aligned center with one another, but the sizing of the mapped area this time is insufficiently too large, as can be seen by the mapped area overprinting on the title and legend and the mapped area touching the neat line on the right side of the frame. Finally, this image shows an example where the size and position are both insufficient. For example, note how the mapped area is not centered with the title and legend and is too small, thus creating large amounts of white space. A topic closely related to sizing and positioning is map balance, and I'll talk about map balance next. Balance is the idea that elements on a map are visually even and complement one another. Like we saw in the examples of map labels and size and position, it can also be useful to look at examples of maps that have poor balance to understand the ideas of visual balance in a map. For example, this is an example of a poorly balanced map. Note how the map appears to be visually tilting to the right as the title, legend, and scale bar 
are on the right side. By comparison, note how this map, which has better visual balance as the title has been centered over the mapped area and the legend and scale bar balance one another out visually by positioning on the bottom right and left. Next, I'll give you some ideas on how you can achieve good balance on your map designs by examining available white space. When designing a map layout to create good visual balance, it can be helpful to consider the available space and how adding new map elements maintains visual balance. For example, when designing a new map layout, first consider all of the available space. Then, as you add new map elements to the layout, keep track of the available space. For example, adding the mapped area and title to the layout reveals several spots of available white space. These can be used to visually balance new map elements as they are added. For example, with the title and mapped area added, the legend can then be added in the available white space on the bottom left of the map. With this addition, the map still has available white space that can be used to balance out the addition of the legend. For example, with the legend, mapped area, and title, a scale bar can be added to the bottom right available space that can balance out the legend on the left and keep the mapped area and title balanced with one another. Next, I'll tell you about insets and why they are an important map element for providing context to the map viewer. Insets are often small maps inside of a larger map layout that provide context and can serve several purposes. For example, insets can be used to locate the primary mapped area. In this example, the inset map on the bottom right corner is used to show where in Europe the area of detail in the main map is located. Conversely, inset maps can also be used to enlarge important areas or show areas that are congested with large numbers of features. In this example, we see how a congested area has been enlarged to show specific details. With all of these background concepts in mind, Let's now begin going through the specific steps for this GIS software tutorial related to cartographic design and map making with ArcGIS Pro. As a reminder, the specific steps for this GIS software tutorial can be downloaded from my website through a link you can find in the video description below. I'll be referencing specific steps in this tutorial in the next series of videos. Hi, this is Brian Tomaszewski. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and share this video. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel and clicking the notification icon to stay up to date on new videos from this channel. Thanks for watching.